This episode of Jedi Mantis Tastes is brought to you with very poor audio quality. I apologise fully for this. Um, there was an issue when I set up the recording. Uh, it switched back to the internal microphone instead of using my more expensive um, microphone that has a much better quality to it. Uh, so once again, apologies for that, um, but on with the show. This one is a uh, Balblair. Balblair, which is a Bal distillery Bal on the northeast of Scotland. Balblair. Bal 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 it's a coastal distillery Bal based way up on the northeast coast of Scotland. Bal the distinctive element here, Bal single malt, one distillery. Balblair. Bal Bal that's Bal the one. Bal to whiskey. To whiskey. Something to sip and meditate over. Together, maybe. And today, the whiskey that I'm trying is going to be a Balblair. Uh, Balblair. Uh, it is here. Balblair. Balblair. Um, it is a distillery situated on the coast of the Darnock Firth. Um, it was the Balblair Distillery. You can see it. It's on the map here. Uh, it was established in 1970 by John Ross, uh, who was a local man and who was joined by his son. Andrew in 1824 uh, and from then the sons and grandsons of, of John Ross operated the Balblair farm and distillery right up until the last few years of the 19th century. Uh, in, 19, in sorry, 1894 uh, John Ross gave up the tenancy of Balblair and so it was transferred to Alexander Cowan who was originally an Inverness wine merchant. Cowan however uh, brought Balblair right up into the 20th century uh, by building the present offices, the still house, the mash house, the kiln and the barns and followed that a year later by relocating the distillery a half mile north to its current location and this was to take advantage of the new railway line uh, that had come to Balblair bringing in coal for the, uh, for the still and the boiler and also barley for malting. Uh, unfortunately, due to tough economic times, it was oft, often the case with the distilleries, and um, the Balblair distillery ceased production and was mothballed in 1911, with the last drop of whiskey leaving the warehouses in 1932. The story of Balblair doesn't end there, however, and in 1939, the newest occupants of the distillery were the army who commandeered the buildings at the outbreak of the Second World War, uh, right through until 1945. After this period, in 1948, Robert James, James Cumming, who was known as Bertie, uh, who was a solicitor from Banff, uh, purchased the distillery for £48,000, obviously old-time money. Uh, and then a year later after that, production resumed in the distillery for the first time since before the First World War, you can say, in Mothball in 1911. Fast forward to 1964, and the Balblair distillery expands with extra warehouses and their first steam boiler. However, in 1970, Cummins dis uh, made the decision to sell Balblair distillery. For the, um, and he sold it to Hiram Walker, uh, which was the company that later became Allied Distillers. This led to further distillery improvements, starting in 1980 with extensive development, including a new roof on the mash house, where two new steel grist bins were also installed. Uh, 1996 saw another change in ownership, uh, this time by Blair's purchased by Inverhouse Distillers, and this begins the newest chapter in the history of Val Blair, uh, when in 2007 the decision is made 
to only release Mal Blair as a vintage whiskey, with every bottle capturing the essence of its vintage year, which is the year it is distilled and laid down in casks. Uh, 2007 saw the first release of the 1997, the 1989 and the 1979 vintages. In 2008, the 1975 and 1990 vintages are released, and these were replacements for the 1979 and 1986 vintages, respectively. Also this year, Valbla introduces uh, its oldest offering to date, the 1965 vintage, um, which was matured in an American oak ex sherry butt uh, and produced only 350 bottles. 2009 saw the 1978 vintage replace the 1975 and the 1991 vintage replace the 1989. Um, going on to 2010, the Balboa Vintage 2000 was released uh, to replace the 1997 vintage and also the second release of the Balboa 1989 replaced the 1991 vintage. There was also this year a Russian exclusive uh, which was the Bal Blair Vintage 1993. 2011 saw a 1995 vintage released exclusively to the Swedish market as well as second releases for the 1991, 2000 and 1995 uh, vintages with the 2000 second release being replaced in the same year by a 2001 vintage. This is also the year that the distillery opened its doors to visitors uh, offering tours and you can find those out a bit more in depth on the website. Uh, 2012 saw the third release of the 1989 vintage, uh, which is what we're trying to do. Uh, also the second release of the 1975 uh, vintage in the 1997 vintage and new releases for vintages from 1996, 2002 and 1969 with 1996 being a travel retail exclusive and the 1969 being launched firstly in the States before being launched out globally in 2013 where we also see the release of vintages from 2003, 1983 and 1990 second release. Finally 2014 sees the arrival of three new vintages for travel retail. Uh, these being the 2004 Bourbon Vintage, the 2004 Sherry Vintage and the um, 1999 Vintage. There was also a second release of the 1999 Vintage. Um, and that brings us up to the present day. Uh, where we're about to open up the third release of the 1989 vintage. Uh, distilled in 1989, bottled as we said in 2012, making this particular whiskey 23 years old. That's all than some of my friends. Um, and let's have a look at this box. You can see normally we would open a box we'd be going in the top, uh, like this, not with this box. This is truly, it's, they've spared no expense. As you can see, this box opens to the front. You can see here we have um, some little notes, some information on the sides here. Also, I don't know if you can hear that, if I move this bit closer to the microphone, it's held together with magnets. It's an expensive box for an expensive whiskey. Um, and what I'm hoping is all I'm hoping it to be. Um, I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, also in the back here, there is a little, I will just pop this down carefully. There is a little leaflet which folds out this just goes over um, a bit more of the gathering place. Uh, perfect expression of Barbara and Single Malt Whiskey is well worth waiting for. We're not sure when it will be ready, but we do know that it can't and shouldn't be hurried. They only release when the whiskey is ready. 
uh, you've got a little bit more information there about the vintage story, everything is in the timing. Uh, Bowblair.com, which again might be up there, that is their website. Um, a little bit more information about the processes and stuff on the website, but we deal with the history. Um, so going back to this box, um, very well put together, uh, probably probably either some very thick card or some possibly even wood in this box. Um, really held together well. The bottle fits nice and snug. Um, in the little groove in the base here, with a little groove on the top for the lid. So we'll shut this back up, put it back to that side, and let's now look at the bottle. So the bottle, quite a squat, wide bottle, all in that liquid. Nice little embossed um, little flare design on the bottle here. Um, if we open the top, then it's going to be a little tricky sometimes the lids of these. There we go. Nice big round top with again that little flash of detail there. You can see there's a cork in there. Not much of a pop, but very wide rim to the actual bottle. But I'm not going to pour much because I don't think I'm going to be um, drinking this one fast. This is a one to save. You can tell already. We've got a tiny amount in there. And that one, just looking at the colour here. It's a very, um, fairly pale. Uh, and that comes down to, I believe, it is on here, it's a natural colour. So there's no coloration added into here. It's also non chill filtered. Um, so there's no, nothing in there to make it crystal clear. So it may go a little cloudy when we add a little bit of water. So we'll swirl this up the sides. So we'll add a little bit of water now. And it is just going to be a tiny bit. So there's only a small amount here. I can see it swirling in there already with the, with the not being chill filter. Um, so swirl this right. Smells amazing. This smells very nice. Getting a very fruity smell. There's a smell of the American oak in there. That's from the big bourbon cask. Maybe apple sort of smell. Dried fruit, maybe a bit sultana. You can smell a bit of spice in there, not overpowering. That's beautiful. Nice bit of spice, taste the fruit. Very smooth, no afterburn, but it's lingering. The taste is lingering, it's not the burn that lingers on this one. It is a, it's a very complex um, flavour that remains in the mouth. That is beautiful. This whiskey has been on my radar for many years, um, introduced as you saw from behind me earlier, uh, the Face Jacker uh, series, where they, they mentioned about that. That's where this whiskey hit my radar, and then I've managed to be able to afford it, because uh, it is expensive. Um, I bought it from the Whiskey Exchange, and it was £105, which is the most I've ever spent on a whiskey. But I could afford it at the time, and that is worth it is worth the money if you like whiskey. I am going to have another bit, a little bit, 
little bit more this time. And I'm gonna have it fun. Yeah. A little bit more of that. Really kind of nice. It, it, this is a fantastic whiskey. I'm not expecting everyone to run out and buy it all. Um, it is archived now, so it's not on release. So it, that's why the price goes up. That's fantastic. It's, it's what I hoped it was going to be. That is an absolutely outstanding whiskey. Um, I think probably the oldest whiskey I've tried at 23 years old. And that for me, that price tag, that's what means this is, this is not one I'm going to rush through. This is going to be a special occasion. This will be um, New Year. The, the times I do drink this, it will be one glass of this and then onto something else. Onto something else that I don't mind finishing off so quickly. Um, if, if you can afford it, this is well worth it. If it is still available when you look and you can afford it, I would strongly recommend trying this. Um, or go on the tour. On the tour, they may well have this one on all the one. There is all the ones out there. You've got your 79s, you've got the, the 69, the 65. If they're still there, they may have them on the tour. So get to the tours and try things. Um, oh, this is nice. Yeah. Just the, the, the notes and tones of the different flavours in there. It, it works perfectly together. Um, you know you're having something special. If I had a hat, I would tip my hat. The, the fact here we go. Best hat I can find. We say we salute the Bal Blair. Um, absolutely outstanding whiskey. Well worth the price. One I'll probably never have again. But we say cheers to Bal Blair. It, it, if you can, I understand £105 is a bit much um, to spend um, unless you have a, a little bit spare that you can afford it. But that is. That is a whiskey to make me happy. And that's where we end this week. Next week there is a vote, so voting's up here. Uh, we we're going to get too um, detailed with the vote, but we have two two packs here, so you can vote for the distillery, and then I will pick a random one from the pack. So we have a Glenfiddich pack, and we have a Talisker. So the Glenfiddich, we have an 18, a 15, and a 12-year-old. The Talisker, we have Talisker Storm, Talisker 10-year-old, and Talisker Sky. So cast those votes now. So it's up here, the voting. Um, thank you for watching. I have very much enjoyed this one. Um, I want to have more, but I'm not going to. Um, but I will see you next week. Uh, Game and Video should be back next week as well. Um, having some technical difficulties with the Xbox um, in getting them um, them recorded but yeah so they'll be back next week thanks for watching and I will see you next time bye